Welcome to a lesson on the existence and uniqueness of an initial value problem in the form of y prime equals f of x comma y with the initial condition y of x sub zero equals y sub zero. We want to ask two fundamental questions about the problem. Number one, does a solution exist? And number two, is the solution unique if it exists? To help us answer the question, we can use Picard's theorem on existence and uniqueness, which states if f of x comma y, which is given by y prime, is continuous as a function of two variables and the partial of f with respect to y exists and is continuous near the point x sub zero comma y sub zero given by the initial condition, then a solution to the initial value problem exists at least for x in some small interval and is unique. It's also important to note that if the first condition of Picard's theorem is met, then there is a solution, we just don't know how many solutions there are. Meaning, if f of x comma y is continuous near x sub zero comma y sub zero, then a solution exists. Again, we just don't know how many solutions there are. So to apply Picard's theorem, we'll first check to see if f of x comma y is continuous near x sub zero comma y sub zero, and then we'll check to see if the partial of f with respect to y is also continuous near the point x sub zero comma y sub zero. However, if f of x comma y is not continuous near the point x sub zero comma y sub zero, we can stop because there is no solution. Let's look at some examples. Let's attempt to solve y prime equals one divided by x with the initial condition y of zero equals zero. Actually, let's first apply Picard's theorem to see if there is a solution and if there is a solution if it's unique. Which means the first step is to check to see if y prime equals f of x comma y, which in this case is one divided by x, is continuous around the point zero comma zero. Notice how I labeled the function f of x comma y, but it's really just a function of x in this case. And it's pretty easy to see here that f of x equals one divided by x is undefined at the point zero comma zero because when x is zero we have division by zero. Since f of x comma y is not continuous around zero comma zero, a solution does not exist at zero comma zero. But let's go ahead and check the result by actually trying to solve the initial value problem. We know to solve y prime equals one divided by x, we integrate both sides of the equation with respect to x, which gives us y or y of x equals natural log absent y of x plus c. Looking at the general solution, we know y equals natural log absent y of x plus c is undefined at x equals zero, because natural log zero is undefined, which verifies the initial value problem does not have a solution with the given initial condition. On this slide, we have the slope field for y prime equals one divided by x. In red, we have the graph of several particular solutions, none of which have the initial condition y of zero equals zero, again, because y equals natural log absent y of x plus c is undefined at x equals zero. Let's look at a second example. Here we're given y prime equals x times the square root of the quantity y minus two with the initial condition y of one equals two. We're asked to determine if there is a solution, and if there is a solution, is it unique? So again, we'll apply Picard's theorem, where the first step is to check to see if f of x comma y equals x times the square root of the quantity y minus two is continuous around the point one comma two, given by the initial condition y of one equals two. Notice when x is equal to one and y is equal to two, we have one times the square root of zero, which is equal to zero, and therefore the function is continuous around the point one comma two, as long as the y value is greater than or equal to two. And therefore we can say, f of x comma y is continuous around one comma two, if y is greater than or equal to two, this means there is a solution. The next step is to check to see if the partial f with respect to y is continuous around the point one comma two. So first we write the function as f of x comma y equals x times the quantity y minus two raised to the one half power, and now we differentiate with respect to y, treating x as a constant, so we multiply by one half, and then subtract one from the exponent. This gives us one half x times the quantity y minus two to the power of negative one half, which is equal to one divided by the product of x and the square root of the quantity y minus two. Notice now when y is equal to two, we have division by zero, and therefore the partial of f with respect to y is not continuous around the point one comma two. So because the first condition of Picard's theorem is met, but the second condition is not, there is a solution to the initial value problem, but it is not unique. To get a better idea of what's happening here, let's take a look at the slope field 
for y prime equals x times the square root of the quantity y minus two. The initial value problem actually has two solutions, which is why there is not a unique solution. First, we have the polynomial solution at the top. We also have the trivial solution, which is the constant function y equals two. And if we look at the slope field, the polynomial function is graphed in black, which we can see fits nicely in the slope field and passes through the point one comma two, given by the initial condition y of one equals two. But notice y equals two also passes through the point one comma two, and when y equals two, y prime is equal to x times zero, which is zero, and y equals two does have a slope of zero. So both of these are solutions to the initial value problem, which again is why we don't have a unique solution. And now let's look at one more example. Here we're given y prime equals x times y squared with y of one equals two. And again, we're asked to determine if there is a solution, and if there is a solution, is it unique? So once again, we'll apply Picard's theorem, where to begin, we check to see if f of x comma y equals x times y squared is continuous around or near one comma two. Well, when x is one and y is two, notice the function value is just one times two squared or four. This indicates f of x comma y is continuous around or near one comma two, and therefore there is a solution. And now we'll check for uniqueness by determining if the partial of f with respect to y is continuous around or near one comma two. The partial of f with respect to y is equal to two times xy. When x is one and y is two, notice how we have two times one times two, which is four. This indicates the partial of f with respect to y is continuous around the point one comma two. So because f of x comma y is continuous, and so is the partial of f with respect to y around the point one comma two, there is a solution to the initial value problem, and it's also unique. To get a better feel for this, let's once again look at the slope field given by y prime equals x times y squared. Here we have the point one comma two, and there is only one function that fits nicely in the slope field and passes through the point one comma two, which we could determine using separation of variables, which would give us y equals negative two divided by the quantity x squared minus two. I hope you found this helpful.